In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service on this, the ninth Sunday after Trinity. It's uh, good to have you with us today as we uh, come to meet God in word and sacrament. I hope that uh, you're not too uncomfortable with this hot weather. We certainly do seem to be having quite a bit of it at the minute and I know it's difficult to sleep and it's incredibly con difficult to concentrate but I hope you're keeping safe and keeping well hydrated. To gather together as God's family, let us ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing the glory.
So let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the richness is of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from St Paul's letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people of Israel passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames and escaped the edge of the sword. Those weaknesses were turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again, others were tortured, and refused to be released, so they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while others were still chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute and persecuted and ill-treated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none had received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wished it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptised and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on five in one household will be divided three against two and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be a scorching heat and it happens. You hypocrite, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's amazing that our Gospel reading should talk about scorching 
heat and, and indeed about rain, which uh, I believe we're going to see a little bit on Tuesday. But it talks very much a little bit, mentions on, touches on baptism. I have a baptism with which to be baptised. And Jesus went around baptising. And next Sunday I have a baptism uh, over near Newquay. And we have in the evening our Celtic service as we come together to meet physically. But as we go through life, and at the minute there's so much on the news. We're hearing about the fires that are because of the dry weather. We are still hearing about the wars and the conflicts in this world. Jesus came to bring a baptism of repentance. And there is a sense that our, our faith is very much about forgiveness. A faith of love and forgiveness. I've often said to people when they've said, oh, you know, what's the difference? You know, you can be a good person without being a Christian. And I said, yes, you can. One of the big differences I've always felt is that Christian, you know, good, you know many people will love lots of people. But the Christians will often love those who are difficult to love. Our faith is about moving on, death and resurrection. And sometimes we have to leave things behind. Sometimes that means leaving people behind. People who cause us pain. People who make life difficult. People who aren't willing to move on. And sometimes, as the Gospels tell us at other points... Brush off the dust off your feet and move on. And certainly as we go through the rest of this month, and certainly, you know, I would imagine it would appear that August is going to be just as hot as ever, you know, that we need to be careful. We are experiencing what many people live with time after time after time. We're now hearing talk of hosepipe bans, so Devon and Cornwall are now considered to be in a drought area. We're seeing reservoirs lower than we've seen them for a long time. We have to conserve water. We've been asked to shower for less. As we go through our daily life, we're having to make adjustments. And for many, as they become Christians and baptised into that Christian faith, there is adjustments that they have to make in their life. So as we go forward, let us remember that we are called to, to love one another. We are called in our baptism to love one another and to love God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God as we say together. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Loving Father, we look to the Virgin Mary today to be inspired by her devotion and commitment to you. Give us the confidence and courage to be faithful, even though times of difficulty and despair are with us. Here are prayers we bring before you. We pray for your church, for all those who share a gospel of love and forgiveness, Lord in your mercy. We pray that foreign ministers from the G7 group of nations force Russia to hand back control of Zephyrphenizia nuclear power plant to Ukraine. We pray for those caught up in the shelling, May they find safe shelter, Lord, in your mercy. Since the Taliban took control of Afghanistan a year ago, we pray for the many children that are currently suffering, hungry and isolated, Lord, in your mercy. With the EU UK experience extreme heat, we pray that the wildfire and drought situation will be kept at bay, Lord, in your mercy. As our health service faces a surge in admissions due to the extreme heat, we pray for all those working in difficult, labour-intensive conditions. Lord, in your mercy. With many struggling and worrying about financial insecurity, we pray that those needing the most help receive all they need to survive and thrive. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray for the sick, for Margaret, June, Joseph, Harry, Baby Lee, Helena, Pauline, Phil, Robert, Bill, Rachel, Mark, Anne, Dominic, Sylvia and Hugh. Bring healing to all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for everyone who has died recently. May they be blessed with eternal life, especially Graham, Leon, John, Frank, Alan, Fiance, Marjorie and Harley. May those who are grieving find the comfort and support they need at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, help us do the best in ourselves and others. Help us to be living beacons of Christian values and virtues, inspiring all we meet. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Thank you, Father, for making us in our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you through Jesus, your Son. So with the angels and everyone in heaven, together we sing. Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. Jesus took the bread. Jesus thanked you, broke it and gave it to the gathered friends, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, thanking you, gave it to the friends gathered there, saying, All of you drink from this cup, because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts, so that with everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father. Through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. So let us pray. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you revealed the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks
It's been good to join with you today and uh, I look forward to being with you next week. As I say, uh, I've got a baptism in the morning next week, but there's still be an online service. And uh, in the evening, uh, we've got the Celtic service at Rascola where we think about Lammas. Uh, which Lammas Day effectively falls on the 1st of August. But we'll be thinking about Lammas, uh, about the first crops coming in and giving thanks to God for those. Really the start of the harvest, whereas Harvest Festival gives thanks at the end of the harvest. But that's at Rascola next Sunday. Uh, six o'clock, uh, followed by uh, tea and refreshments. It will be good to be with you then. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.